So there is a goose on my farm who has gone broody. Broody's the term that's used when you have a bird that wants to sit on a nest in order to hatch her eggs. But the only problem is, as the goose farmer, I've been stealing her goose eggs. I've been collecting all the eggs because I'm getting ready to hatch some goose eggs myself in an incubator inside. And so the problem is, she's been sitting on a pile of wooden eggs. I use the wooden eggs as a way to let the geese know where they should make their nests. I do feel quite guilty about this situation, and I feel bad for the mother goose because I think she genuinely wants to be a mother goose. But I really want her to have a chance to be a mother goose, and so that's why in today's video I'm going to help her out and give her that opportunity. You see, because inside this basket I have a dozen fertile chicken eggs, and I want to see if I can encourage her to hatch out some chickens for me. All right guys, let's go breed our birds. Morning birds! What are you doing, Jeremy? Get back in there. Don't be a troublemaker. Come on, inside Jeremy, let's go. Jeremy's always the troublemaker on our farm. Jeremy, no! <laughs> good girl, Abby, that was really good. As you can see, this is our farm's usual morning chaos, and I think my birds want to go outside. Release the Kraken! Yeah, we're dead smack in the middle of a Vermont mud season right now. It's pretty disgusting around the farm. The temperatures are starting to warm up and all of the snow is starting to recede and melt. And that means we have mud absolutely everywhere. And it's wicked gross. But with mud season on our farm, it also begins the start of hatching season. Our birds are at peak laying. I'm getting about 50 to 60 goose eggs a week. I'm getting somewhere between 65 and 80 duck eggs a week, 65 to 80 chicken eggs a week. And my geese in particular are starting to sit on nests. And even more specifically, this gal right down here has been sitting on the same nest for more than a week. I have to evict her each morning to collect the eggs that are underneath her. Because this is where they usually lay their eggs. It's somewhere down in here. Like this goose is also sitting on another nest, but she hasn't been sitting on the same nest nearly as long. Excuse me, girl. Up, please. And yep, here you go. Here is a fresh goose egg that she just laid. But you'll also notice that down here I have this wooden egg. These were some eggs that a viewer sent me and I used them to help teach the geese where to lay their eggs. And so throughout this nesting station I have here, I have wooden eggs scattered throughout. Here we have a duck egg this blue runner duck egg, and then another wooden egg. And usually this works fine, but for whatever reason, that mother goose over there, she has marked those two wooden eggs that are sitting underneath her, and she thinks that they're her babies. Excuse me, miss. And no matter how hard I try or where I move those eggs, she and her nesting partners always seem to take those eggs and roll them back into place.
And so I'm realizing that she's gone so broody that maybe the better thing to do would be to give her some eggs to hatch out rather than try to disrupt her nesting instincts. Oh, looks like in this nest we have Yep, another wooden egg, another duck egg, and another goose egg. Like I said, I'm getting a lot of these right now. Because we raise geese for meat, what we're typically doing this time of year is taking the eggs and hatching them ourselves. The reason I'd prefer hatching these eggs versus letting the geese do it is because the geese have a much lower success rate in terms of percentage hatched. I'm usually somewhere between 40 and 50%. The geese are usually around 20 or 15% in terms of the success rate on hatching. But once the goslings are hatched by the mother gooses, oftentimes their mothering instincts aren't the best. Oh, hey. Whoa, easy. In fact, once hatched, those baby birds only have about a 50-50% success rate of surviving to adulthood. And so I don't want to risk those goslings with these mother geese. But one thing I've always wondered is, can I get a goose to hatch maybe a duck or a chicken? Because my geese have good maternal instincts, and the fact that I want more chickens on the farm this year, I'm wondering if I can use their help to try to hatch these eggs. These chicken eggs are a lot more common than the goose eggs and a lot less valuable to me. I mean, like this basket, for example, that you see here is just yesterday's eggs. There's no magic to it. And so I'm willing to sacrifice this. And let's see if we can get Mother Goose to hatch these eggs. Hey, Mother Goose. Would you get up? Excuse me, Mother Goose. How'd you go, girl? Come on. Up, 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 up. Come on. the other geese there just a minute ago. But it looks like we have a nest. Now we're just gonna have to wait to see if Mother Goose goes back to sitting on her nest and accepts those new chicken eggs I've added to the nest. But meanwhile, I have more eggs to collect right now. As you can see, every day is an Easter egg hunt here on our farm when you have ducks. There's one here, there's one here. Oh, looks like we got a couple of goose eggs and duck eggs here. So yeah, you can see my egg haul here for this morning. That's six goose eggs, 10 duck eggs, and two chicken eggs so far. I'll probably do two more collections today, one at midday and then one at the end of the afternoon, yielding me maybe one or two more goose eggs, one or two more duck eggs, and probably about eight to 10 chicken eggs. Chickens always lay their eggs later in the day for some reason on our farm. And as we check back in with Mother Goose, looks like she is back on her nest. I take that as a really good sign because that means she doesn't feel like I've messed with the nest too much. So it looks like our odds of her accepting the nest are pretty good. But meanwhile, I have a cadre of geese who've been surrounding me. Of particular note is Bruce the Goose. He's that buff goose who's like the second one to the last in that lineup of geese. Now third to the last, the guy going right through the door. For those of you that don't know the backstory, Bruce the Goose was a goose who came to our farm back in the fall of 2020 as a mature buff gander. When he first arrived on the farm, he had some conflicts. And here it was turning violent and ugly. Luckily, our town constable, Toby Dog, was trying to break up the violence if it got too aggressive. But over the last couple of years, he's really settled into our farm. And he's actually now become the lead gander on our farm in terms of he's got the top position as well as the most geese that he oversees. Our girl sitting on the nest is one of his geese they have paired off and they have been mating this year. And so you'll notice that he's probably been the goose that's been the most protective. In fact, earlier as I was just collecting eggs, I saw him giving Abby the business. Poor little Abby means so well but sometimes I think she just needs to give the geese just a little bit more personal space. Yeah, I'm talking about you, girl. You mean well, but sometimes I don't think you know what you mean. Aw, but you're a sweetheart. Oh, there's our rooster, Black Francis. He's actually checking out Mother Goose in her nest as well. Interestingly enough, Black Francis is probably the father of a good chunk of those eggs that are in there. So Black Francis came to our farm last year as a bonus chick from our hatchery, Murray McMurray. I'm pretty sure he's a black Australorp rooster, and uh, he's been a really good rooster so far, so I'm happy to have him pass on his genes to those little babies down there. Hey, speak of the devil. How's it going, Bruce the Goose? You doing good? 
Yeah, see, Bruce is checking on his nest. You know, one of the reasons why I think geese are such better parents than chickens or ducks is because the geese actually work in pairs, sometimes even threesomes. Like for example, one of Bruce's other mates has been watching and supervising this nest and this nesting mother as well. And so because of that relationship, I think it helps a lot of things. We're not too worried about predators here on our farm because of the two large white farm dogs, but you do have to worry about other birds trying to steal the nest or interfering. And because you have the protection of Bruce, that means that nobody else is gonna wanna mess with them. You can even see like Bruce is a little nervous as Abby's kind of close to the nest. And so he's around. Actually that white goose that you see right back there, that's Bruce's other mate, the other one that I said helps out a lot. But it looks like Brucey's getting up to go get some food and water. You know, there's actually a lot of myths when it comes to geese and mating, and some people will say that geese mate for life, but that's really only if you have two geese that are stuck together. If you have a group of, say, six or more geese together that are equal ratios or slightly more females to males, what you're gonna find is that those geese mate for a season. And so for that specific year, they're very connected to each other, but they can drift apart. The other myth that's out there, particularly for all nesting birds, is that they never get up off their nest. And my experience has always been that the mother bird will get up off the nest once or twice a day to go get some water or go get some food and that sort of thing. And so, you know, while they do lose body weight and the process of sitting on a nest does take a toll on their body, they're not experiencing complete starvation and deprivation. And honestly, this is what their body was meant to do. And they're instinctually driven to do it. Oh, would you look at that? Abby's up on the hay bale, <laughs> or straw bale, I should say. So we'll check back in with Mother Goose in a little bit, but I do have other farm chores to do. And in case anybody's wondering, our cattle are doing really well. I continue to do the Macho Man training, but that's probably a whole separate other video to talk about. But needless to say, it is going well. As far as other big things on the farm, this is probably one of the biggest things going on. The construction of our timber frame barn is just making some incredible progress. We're expecting a full day of rain today, so the crew isn't here, but they have been just cranking it out. And it's really starting to look like an honest to goodness building in here. They've got the west side and the east side fully sided. There's work going on right now to put the stairs in place. This right here is the giant bay door where our tractor is gonna come in and out of. So like the spot I'm standing in right now is the parking spot for my tractor. There's also gonna be a person door right over there and then a garage bay door right there and then another garage bay door right there. And yes, Pablo Escobar has most definitely claimed this place as his home already. Like he's been spending most days just kind of hanging out, particularly sitting up on the second floor. And I mean, fair enough, because this is like the house that Barn Cat's built. The siding and flooring work is gonna continue over the next few days, but the real big work is gonna be putting the roof peak on pretty soon. And to do that, we're gonna get the crane back in here and like lift these giant pieces up to the top and set them in place. We'll also use that as the opportunity to put the steel roofing on top of the building as well. I just think that this space is gonna be absolutely perfect. Come on guys, let's go visit our birds. Woo, wow. So according to our in-hoop coop temperatures, it is 77 degrees inside the hoop coop and it is 54 degrees outside the hoop coop. Is that napping weather for you, huh? Pretty soon I'm gonna have to start opening up the sides of the hoop coop to get some better air and ventilation into this place. But let's check in on our chicken mom here. Let's see how she's doing. And looking at the video footage, it seems like she accepted the eggs, but let's try to convince her to get off to double check ourselves. Can I get in there for a second? Up, 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 please. You know, when I said earlier that Bruce the Goose is a really good goose husband, it's the behavior that you're seeing here when I even try to nudge her off the nest where he becomes very protective of her to make sure everything's okay. That's his job, is to guard the nest. And that's why ganders often get that reputation of being aggressive because they're usually trying to guard their gooses. They're not trying to be mean-spirited. Oh, the dogs are looking adorable right now. Chicken eggs, duck eggs, a couple more goose eggs. Yes, Abby, you're a good girl.
Well, it seems like all of the eggs are there and accounted for. And so I think our little experiment is starting to be a success. But we truly won't know the answer until three weeks later. And so if it hasn't been three weeks yet, you should probably subscribe to our videos. And as soon as that video is available, I'll leave it up there. Thanks for watching, everybody.